and we based in Mozambique. This is Maria. She's mother to four small children. She's illiterate. She has no skills. So the only way that she can make a living is by selling products on the side of the road. Every morning she leaves home at 4 a.m. She travels long distances with large amounts of money on her body. She buys products, she takes them back, and then she sells them. Hopefully, by the end of the day, she will have made a living wage of $2. Maria is not alone. There's another 3 million women like her in Mozambique and 100 million more across Africa and the developing world. So for this reason, we decided to develop a digital retail platform that allows Maria very easily through her mobile phone to view products, place an order and pay using her mobile wallet. In this way, she no longer needs to travel. We save her on operating costs and also she no longer feels that she's going to be assaulted. So this is how Mawaza works. Maria places the order, we accept that order, we route it through to the supplier, and then at that point, we create a smart contract. This smart contract is shared by all the partners in the fulfillment channel. And in this way, we reduce administration costs, increase turnaround times, and also ensure product surety. We do another thing, and that is we link all the traders like Maria to each other so that they can be selling products as well to, to themselves. So this also increases their sales. To date, we have made 200,000 US dollars in turnover from transaction fees. We have partnered with the Ministry of Trade and Commerce in Mozambique. We've mapped out 550 marketplaces, and we're going to be bringing on 100 suppliers onto the platform. Oops. We are a team of six, and we have over 60 years of experience in supply chain management. We have managed to impact 1,250 ladies and seen their income increase from $2 to $5. We are now fundraising 500,000 US dollars to bring another 60,000 ladies onto our platform. We will use this money to continue building the blockchain and to integrate artificial intelligence into our solution. This way, we transform trade in Mozambique. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Susanna. <laughs> and now let's move on to the jury. Uh, I just have a quick question. You started your pitch with this example of the illiterate woman who cannot read and write. Uh, how is such a woman then able to use your platform? Okay, so Maria, she is semi literate, so she has got some basic knowledge of letters and of numbers, but we also have an agent network that goes out into these marketplaces and works with the ladies and teaches the ladies how to use the platform. So technology-wise, I mean, uh, blockchain, AI, but it seemed like there was a Nokia dumb phone there. Uh, is this SMS-based or do you have to have smartphones to use it or what kind of technology do you have to have? Okay, so there's two things that we do do. Uh, we do have SMS, so we do a lot of the communication with the ladies with SMS, and then the agents have a tablet. So when they're showing the ladies how to use or how to place orders, they're also teaching, and they're upgrading them onto a web platform. So they're teaching them web literacy. And how do you organize the shipping? I mean, how do you bring the goods then from here to there? Okay, so the suppliers, they are already delivering products. What they don't know is where the customers are. So we are telling the suppliers there's an extra demand in these particular areas. So we work very closely with the suppliers and the distributors, and the distributors have their own logis logistic partners. I have a question regarding your um, business model. You mentioned transaction fees and that you raised uh, 200K. Is that based on percentage or is it like a case-by-case -case basis? No, so we charge a flat fee on every transaction that goes through the system. And going forward, are you experimenting new models? 
Yeah, okay, so our first, transaction, our first revenue stream is transaction fees, but we're also going to be charging subscription fees to the suppliers for advertising their products on our platform, and then we will be selling or commercializing the data. And what products are we talking about? Is it food or is it grocery or is it... Yeah, it's own? groceries, it's non-perishable foodstuffs. So we're working with the likes of Unilever, Parmalat, Danone. Can you go back to your team? I was just curious, you said you have 60 years of experience in supply chain and what about the people in the technology behind or are you going to outsource that part or developing it with the money that you're asking? Yeah, okay. So we have partnered up with a development team based in Cape Town and then we're working with IATA Foundation for the blockchain development. And I mean, actually, in the end, it will also grow competition among these small scale retailers, let's say this way. How can they cope then with this bigger competition? I mean, maybe then bigger retailers come in and squeeze them out. Use your platform to, to go and to squeeze the small retailers out of the market. So we're working with the small retailers. We want the re small retailers to be part of our platform. Um, and we'll bring all the different suppliers onto the platform, so it becomes a big, large uh, marketplace for Mozambique. So I don't know if I've answered your question properly, sorry. I mean, maybe then the, the, the bigger ones can use your platform to squeeze really the small retailers that are at the road today uh, were selling their products out of their markets. It's maybe driving competition and squeeze out the small retailers out of the market, your platform. Well, I don't see that being... A challenge, if you look at how trade is working in Mozambique and the fact that a lot of the trade is very community-based, so it's good to have these informal retailers, because they're informal retailers, onto our platform. All right, Susanna, and that's it. Thanks so much. <laughs> Susanna Morena from thank Mozambique. Movoza, thank you.